Uh, good evening, everybody. Is everyone here that we expect to be here? Uh, Kristen Chantrell, Vice Chair up there, Mr. Gaishal, our town's wetland agent. Uh, Jennifer Lindo is helping uh, run the meeting in her capacity. Jen, what's your technical capacity for these meetings? Administrative assistant. Head guru. Sue Spang is our, is our, is our keep keeping notes for the record, secretary per se, right? Uh, Notch is a commission member. Sandy is a commission member. Uh, sorry, Sa Sandy. I always skip your last name, Sandy, and I don't oh, think. Janak. 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 Sandy's an alternate. The alternate, yep. David Schmidt. Um, Mark's, it's not Mark's iPad. You're really messing with me, Phyllis. Uh, Mrs. Phyllis oh. Berger with on oh, sorry. iPad. Uh, Mr. Daigle is our ex officio. Uh, we also have um, OPEG, I believe. There's a lot of sunlight there. I, from the likes of it, it looks, I'm not going to. We have it. a couple members of the public that are. Don Fiminster is there. Uh, oh. Rosemary Osfeld is there, and we've got a few other people here. Um, so uh, Doreen Ryan wants to be admitted. Are you letting her in, Jen? There she I is. I am. Doreen Ryan is also a commission member. So tonight, who are we going to say is seated, at least for this show cause hearing? We can have as many of seven as seven of us. So one, two, three, four, five six, seven. So one of the alternates is technically not seated. You're just listening if you'd like. Uh, do we, do, does it matter for either of you guys? Um, who, which, have either of the alternates sat over um, the past hearings and matters on this particular uh, issue? If not, it might be better that neither of you are seated as an alternate. I wasn't at the last meeting. So maybe, was Doreen at the last meeting? I was, I, I sat at the last meeting. Okay. okay. So for this meeting, we'll seat Doreen the alternate and we'll leave Sandy off. To, and thank you, Sandy, for participating, even to pay attention. Um, if anyone has a question, if we have any trouble, it looks like we got Jason Diebel showing up too. Uh, if there's any trouble and you can't be heard, just raise your hand in the age of technology, just raise your hand. And if it's really bad, put both your hands up and we will <laughs> shut up and we will say, what the heck do you have to say? Um, so um, I'm going to, say that we're here for a show cause hearing. This is the East Lyme Inland Wetlands Agency. The time is seven past uh, six on July 13th, 2020. I'm Gary Upton. Uh, it looks like we've got a well-staffed commission here this evening. Um, and uh, this, again, the, the purpose of this meeting is simply uh, our show cause he uh, hearing for uh, Jason Pazaglia's uh, uh, work site um, for the cease and desist, we issued uh, Mr. Gaishal, if you could remind me on the date uh, and the address of the location, just for the record, please, sir. Well, the, uh, the order was issued on June 10th, 2020. I believe it went certified mail on June 12th, um, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, we did receive correspondence from uh, Mr. Pazalia's uh, attorney, Attorney Paul Garrity. Um, so I have that letter I can read into the record if you'd like. Um, now as good as time as any, unless you have questions. I think that makes sense. Okay, so that letter is uh, dated July 9th, 2020, also sent by email to ggaishal at eltownhall.com. Mr. Gaishal, one second. This is available for anyone listening. This is available posted on the town website under our, our documents, correct? Yes. Yep. Yep. I just want to make sure that what's being read is available for inspection by the public if they like. If you search East Lime Inland Wetlands Agency, you will, after digging for a little while, be able to find the materials for this meeting. Go ahead, Mr. Rachel. Sorry. So this is addressed to Gary Upton, Chairman, Inland Wetlands Commission, Town of East Lime, 108 Pennsylvania Avenue, Niana, Connecticut, 06357, regarding 297 Boston Post Road, East Lime, IWC, uh, cease and desist. Dear Mr. Upton, this correspondence shall serve notice that I have been retained by Paz and Construction LLC with regard to the above cease and desist notice. This letter shall serve as a follow-up to my correspondence to Gary Gaishal of July 2nd, 2020. Section 14 of the East Lime Inland Wetland Regulations requires my client be given a hearing within 10 days of the notice of violation. The commission failed to afford my client the opportunity of a hearing within the required time frame. We therefore deem a cease and desist to be void. I should point out that 
Al Smith, the owner of the property, has been storing vehicles and material on the property prior to the enactment of wet, wet, wetland regulations by the town. More importantly, the activities present presently conducted on the site have no impact on the lake, which forms the boundary of the property. Because there is no jurisdiction over my client, we do not intend to appear at the hearing scheduled for July 13, 2020. That said, my client will apply for a permit to conduct activity within the review area in accordance with the East Lyme regulations. Please feel free to contact me should you have any questions or which to discuss these matters further. Sincerely, Paul M. Gary, CC, Jason Pazalia. All right, so um, thank you for reading that in. Um, as a member of a committee member that had attended the site walk, uh, for anyone else listening, this is a, a matter where we've kind of gone back and forth about site cleanup for a while. And um, we went uh, just a few days before that last meeting, um, the weekend before, to inspect the site in person. And during our last meeting, we submitted uh, evidence into the record, pictures, so on and so forth of our site walk. Um, and uh, we're uh, quite, I myself was dismayed at the level of material and things that were close to the water. Um, and I think uh, I'd rely on the other commissioners to speak for their own opinion on that matter. I'm not going to put words in anyone else's mouth. Um, as for the timeline for the um, having the, the show cause hearing after the issuance of the cease and desist. Um, I'm sorry if my lighting is funny. Um, as for the timeline, uh, obviously there was some correspondence, Mr. Gaishel, that dates back to June 17th between you and myself. Um, we had Sue Spang and Attorney Zamarka and Jen Lindo uh, and a few other people. It looks like Mr. Nickerson and Ed O'Connell were on there and we were going back and forth, including, but uh, let's see, we also had I believe, uh, yeah, Kristen Chantrell. Um, we had discussed some issues. Um, we were trying to figure out how to, just to kind of catch everyone up historically here. We want, we were attempting to have a meeting. The first meeting you said you couldn't attend, correct, Mr. Gaishel? Uh, a meeting in regards to this particular item? Yes. Uh, I, I think it was, yeah, I had a conflict with, with the scheduling, uh, but that, again, it, I think we, we had gone back and forth 10 days from the date of the issuance. Um, I know I couldn't make it, but that necessarily wouldn't help hold up the, the agency for a meeting. At the end of the day, we were unable to achieve a quorum to discuss the matter within 10 days. So that said, uh, while Mr. Garrity believes his client uh, doesn't fall within our jurisdiction, um, I, I believe he, he still does. Um, so I, I, well, I appreciate Mr. Garrity's opinion. I don't know that it actually you know, how much weight it does hold. I briefly discussed the matter with attorney Zamarka uh, and it's our opinion, the cleanest way to go forward would be to reissue the order and within 10 days hold that hearing. Uh, basically it, it cleans it all up. Uh, that said, I do believe the order does stand in my, my professional opinion. So our or original issuance is June 10th with a ship date of June 12th, 2020, correct? Correct. Uh, July would be about now-ish for, we're in about 30 days, plus or minus a day. August and September would bring us to 90 days. If we did, in fact, it is my understanding post per executive order 7M that we were using the extension that's been provided us by the governor, we could l allow the first cease and desist order to stand as long as we were to meet within the 90 days of that original extension period. Does that make sense? certainly does. I mean, I think you had I mean, to post that before, right? In which case we would, we would still be posting it uh, within time, but you had to post it before you issued the order. So if, if, if any of the, the commissions, this is what attorneys and Mark explained to me for a zoning matter. He said, if any of the commissions chose to enact the 90 day executive order, you had to have a meeting whereby you made a motion and agreed to extend the 90 days and it had to be posted on the town's website before you enacted using that 90 day executive order. In which case we could do that right now is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And we then you'd have to reissue the order. Hmm. That's the way it was explained to me. 
but we can just reissue the order today and then have a hearing within 10 days, right? Correct. That would be the cleanest in my opinion. And, yeah. Mr. Cox, what was your, do you, are you in agreement with that? Yeah, that sounds like the cleanest way to do it from my perspective too. Okay. All right. I had just, I had poured over these emails and that makes sense rather than getting into the, yeah. All right. If that's what you guys think, anyone else have any opinion? As a separate issue, might we want to consider accepting the, what, I don't know the proper language, but the 90 day extension that's allowed by state law until this is over, which would cover us for any future applications that arise. I think that's a good idea. Would you like to make a motion? I move that we as a agency accept the governor's recommendation that we be allowed to exercise an extension from 10 days to 90 days or I, I, to allow an extension up to 90 days on any application until the COVID restrictions end. I'll second. So we have a motion. Let me just real quick, if I could hit the pause button, I want to work with Ms. Spang to make sure that we understand and have that language down. I do see Mr. Daigle, just one second, Mr. Daigle. Um, I want to make sure Sue has that before we confuse the airways here. Sue, how are you feeling? Okay, um, let me see. Move as an agency to accept the governor's directive uh, to move from 10 days to 90 days due to the COVID crisis. And it's executive order 7M. 7M as in Michael? Yep. 7M3 specifically authorizes state department heads, commissioners, boards. Uh, you don't need to put that in there, but um, mm -hmm. this is just a little extra conversation. I don't, I don't think you need the 10 days because you guys aren't just doing this for the cease and desist. You're trying to say this is for anything that comes correct. in. Correct. That's so, correct. Yes. So not the 10 days. It's so just you want to take out the 10 days, Dave? Whatever the governor allows, I move we accept. I agree. Yeah, sorry. Oops, we're not voting yet. And I seconded. All right, so we have a motion that stands. Sue, do you have that down so I can let Mr. Daigle, he's uh... Yeah, I'm just taking out the 10 days basically from what I originally had read. Right. Do you want to read it to us just so we can make sure that... Yep. Okay, move as an agency to accept the governor's directive of 90 days due to the COVID crisis. All right. Is Let's that see. what you want, Dave? That pretty much covers it. I think everyone understands the spirit of it, right? <clears throat> All right. I so just want to make sure that it says what you want it to say. Yep. And I think, uh, yeah, it's true. Dave, would you consider to add just the, to cite order 7M to your motion? Just no to make problem. Sure? Okay. So there we have a motion that stands. Now we can go up for discussion. In this discussion, I'm going to hit off right to the top, Mr. Daigle. You had your hand up. Yes, sir. What, can, what do you have to say, sir? Two things. Uh, the motion should be seconded as amended. Oh, true. Rosemary, sorry. Seconded as amended. And my next question is a procedural item. Is a cause hearing the right place to enact this, or should it be in a regular scheduled meeting, or does it not matter? Just should probably sure. be in the regularly scheduled meeting. I think we're here and we're spending the time. I mean, I get what you're saying. No, uh, please, I'm, I don't know the answer. I just wouldn't want you to enact this and then have it be in question later on if it wasn't in, mm -hmm. if it needed to be in a regular meeting. That's well, my only point. But so it's a motion made, I mean, I, it's a motion made by the commission at a, at a meeting, right? So, and yeah. I think that- Gary, do you have any? My, my opinion would be to make the same motion during the regular meeting just to cover yourself better safe than sorry. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. So the we motion. Can do both. Yeah, let's do both. I agree. The motion stands. Um, I'm going to take a roll call from the top. Uh, all in favor. Uh, myself as the chairman, I'm in favor of this. Ms. Chantrell, your, your vote, please. I'm in favor. In favor. Mr. Koch, your opinion, sir? Uh, I'm going to abstain until the regular meeting. Okay. Sandy is not seated. Um, Phyllis, your, your vote? Um, I, I agree. Now, there's no. I'm, I'm not quite sure why we're doing this because isn't the, the uh, thing with the state automatic for the, because of the COVID? I see the a virus? shaking head with no. So that's a, yeah. that's a, we thought that. 
Let's say it is automatic. So if it is, if it's not automatic, if it's automatic, it stands, I would interpret. And if it's not automatic, then we need to vote on it like we have. The only reason okay. I moved it was because I thought that I understood our attorney to say that we had to accept it. That's the direction that, that we were given. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I'm fine with it. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Fiminster, you're seated as a regular member now. Your vote, sir? Uh, yes. I vote yes. Rosemary is, has voted as she seconded, right? And uh, Doreen? Correct. Yes. And Mr. Diebel, is he, you're an alternate technically right now, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, the ayes have it. We yes. have one abstain from Mr. Koch. As I understand it, this would be enough to have that in place, but we will rediscuss this at our next meeting. Um, moving forth to keep us on time, uh, a budget of time here. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to reissue the cease and desist order for the 297 uh, Boston Post Road uh, property owned by Mr. Could you fill me in, Mr. Gaishel? Backfill this for me. Al, I think he's saying Al. Is it Al Smith? Yes. Al Thank Smith. You. Al Smith, Gary. And used by Mr. Jason Pazaglia, Pazaglia Construction. Um, so I may, my motion is to reissue a cease and desist per this committee's discussion about that. What was the address, Boston Post Road? 297. 297. Thanks. Do I hear a second? I'll okay. second. All right, I've got Miss Berger as a second. And here we are running from the top down. Uh, is there any other further discussion on this matter? Yeah, I have a, a question. In, in response to Mr. Pazalia's lawyer, uh, the points that he makes in his letter, I, I find uh, dissatisfying. Um, and I'm wondering if he's in this order, if this is the right place to ask him to fill in facts that support his factual assertions and and any law that supports his legal assertions now, or if that's something that we take up at the actual hearing, or at least to give them notice of our intent about his letter. So you would, can you clarify for the rest of us, Ted? Yeah, in the letter he says it doesn't affect the pond, but he doesn't say why he thinks that. And he says essentially they're grandfathered in and he doesn't support, he doesn't give any law supporting that proposition either. So I'd like to know. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know if that goes into the cease and desist order here or, or what, but I would like to put him on notice that I'm concerned um, about whatever supports his letter. I think that makes sense. Um, so I think those are matters we should discuss them when we are at our show cause hearing, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of the counter claim to our, we're saying, hey, stop doing this. And they're simply saying, well, we can do this because, and we can say, well, show us why. Yeah. Um, all right, so um, is there anything from a, go ahead, Mr. Gaishel. Um I just wanna ensure that if the, maybe the commission could take time and check their calendars and see if they are available in 10 days, or, or I'm gonna have to coordinate the issuance with our next meeting. Um, so either 10 days from now, or I can get it and time it so that we have the show cause hearing at our, our August meeting. Technically with our motion to extend 10 to 90, we can now do it within 90 days. Right. Right. So we, we could just go to July unless of course you want to come back here. Uh, but again, if we're going to reissue the order and just try to keep things clean and within the 10 day, then, you know, my, my suggestion would be to coordinate that now. Are you saying that you could issue it 10 days before the regularly scheduled August meetings? That, that is typically what I do with enforcement actions. Uh, it, you know, to, to make it convenient for the commission and have everyone there. Well, that's not always uh, prudent because uh, the, the situation or the violation may warrant a meeting immediately. In those cases, we have to step up and move things faster. So uh, I, I think looking at the situation here, the violations continue. There's not an active erosion and sedimentation issue uh, out there. It's, it's the, the outside storage of equipment and materials. So in that case, I don't know that there's any 
uh, emergency to to just hold a, a hearing in 10 days but uh certainly we can coordinate it with our next meeting if the you know whatever the agency's pleasure i think it's prudent to just put it on the august calendar Okay. So I'll coordinate the issuance of the new C and D with the August meeting. Meeting, and, and we we understand that we're not missing anything by by right to to delay the issuance until ten days before, correct? Yeah, we're not missing out on anything. And in, in in addition, I will just for the record, um, and I believe later on in the meeting, this item comes up on the regular meeting agenda, in which attorneys of Marco will be present at that time, and you could ask them some questions then regarding this matter. Uh, and his legal opinion as to why he may think the order still stands. Um, I, I'd say it's akin to an application uh, pending before the planning commission where wetlands say that may not have yet acted on the application before them. They need to furnish a report to planning. Well, that just because they don't act within their statutory time limits, meaning the wetland agency doesn't automatically approve the plan. So in under that same context, doesn't the, the, the violation, the order just doesn't automatically expire. It can't. So, I mean, I think, and the fact that the agency is directing me to reissue the order basically is upholding what was already issued. So, kind of. Sounds like we're covered. We're covered. Right. So, we are agreeing that our time, I just want to be crystal clear, we're agreeing that we are going to reissue the CND 10, 10 days before the actual meeting. Correct. But then, what if it is shipped and it's not received? So it, needs, it needs to be received 10 days before the show cause, correct? Yeah, we, well, I, in terms of the order that was issued, I used the, that was written on the 10th. Um, I put the date of the order as being the 10th, even though it's received on the 12th. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, I'll let the attorneys and the courts figure out what date they want to use. It's two day, a two day difference. Um, but I, I would, you know, just to play it safe, I'll coordinate it so that it's at least issued well in advance of the meeting. So the meeting will fall within 10 days and it'll give them two or three days on the other side to receive it. All right. Everyone agrees on that. Any, any concerns? Do we need a motion? I'd recommend a motion directing staff to reissue the order, but I think Mr. Upton, didn't you do that? Yeah, 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 already already did, yeah. Yeah. Unless you seconded. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Phil seconded. Vote on it now, right? Yes. Yep. So uh, I guess voting on the motion to Sue, can you restate the motion for us? Sure. To reissue the cease and desist order for 297 Boston Post Road owned by Al Smith and used by Jason Pazalia. All right. Uh, all in favor from the top, myself, uh, it's an aye, Ms. Chantrell. Aye. Uh, Ted Koch. Aye. Sandy is seated as an alternate. Sorry, Sandy, I always do that. Dave Schmidt. Aye. Uh, Phyllis. Aye. Uh, Don. Aye. Mary, uh, sorry, Rosemary, I apologize. Aye. And uh, Doreen. Aye. All right. The ayes have it. There are no abstentions uh, and there are no nays. So there we have it. The, it will be reissued. Thank you, guys. I'm, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to close out this meeting for a little while until seven o'clock where we'll re-meet to, to start our public hearing on our regulations. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, we have a second from Mr. Schmidt, it sounds like, to adjourn the meeting. All in favor, by a show of hands, keeping it the easy way. Uh, All right, guys, uh, I know we have more than four votes, so there we go. Um, we'll catch you at seven o'clock. Make sure you check the number for the meeting. It's not the same number as this one, right, Jen? Yes, it's not the same. Right, and we'll see you there in a little bit.